Tigers. Our story today is called, Hey Little Ant. This is written by Philip and Hannah Hoos and illustrated by Debbie Tilly. Look how they put that on the kids' glasses. That's interesting. This is read with permission by Penguin Random House. Hey Little Ant. In this story, I want you guys to be thinking about the author's message. What does the author want you to learn? And at the end, I'm going to ask you guys' opinion about something in this text. So be thinking about the text as I'm reading so you guys can have an opinion about it. Hey, little ant. And this is, so the way this is written is it says kid, and it has the what the kid says. And then it says ant, and it says what the ant says. So I'm just going to read it just like that, just the way it's written. So it's, it says kid, that means the kid's talking. Kid. Hey, little ant down there in the crack, can you hear me? Can you talk back? See my shoe, can you see that? Well, now it's gonna squish you flat. Have you guys ever seen an ant or a bug on the ground and you just think, ah, oh, it's just a bug, who cares? I'm gonna squish it. Have you ever thought that before? Hmm. Ant. Please, oh please, do not squish me. Change your mind and let me be. I'm on my way with a crumb of pie. Please, oh please, don't make me die. So that kid is way bigger than the ant, and he wants to just squish the ant because he thinks that the ant doesn't matter because it's just a little bug. Hmm. The life of that ant, he thinks, doesn't matter because the, the bug is little. Hmm. Oh, the book goes up and down on this page. Kid. Anyone knows that ants can't feel. You're so tiny, you don't look real. I'm so big and you're so small. I don't think it'll hurt at all. Whoa. Back this guy up. So the kid is saying that because the ant is so, so, so small, and the kid is so big that the ant doesn't even matter because of his size. But think about that. Aren't you guys a lot smaller than adults and grown-ups? Don't you matter? Hmm. Just because of the size you are doesn't mean you don't matter. Hmm. I wonder what the authors want ants to learn in this. Interesting. Ant. But you are a giant, and giants can't know how it feels to be an ant. Come down close. I think you'll see that you are very much like me. So the ant is saying that, well, even though I'm smaller than, than you, I'm, I still have feelings. Hmm. Hmm. Kid, are you crazy? Me? Like you? I have a home and a family too. You're just a speck that runs around. No one would care if my foot came down. So the kid's saying that he has a family at home. He has a life. So he he like matters so he's saying the ant doesn't have those things so the ant doesn't matter just because he's smaller he's saying that he, he doesn't know anything about the ant so he's saying that the ant doesn't matter ant oh big friend you are so wrong my nest mates need me because i'm strong i dig our nest and feed baby ants too i must not die beneath your shoe so the ant is telling the kid about all the things that the ant does that makes him important. So the, the boy didn't know any of those things. Hmm. Kid, but my mom says that ants are rude. They carry off our picnic food. They steal our chips and breadcrumbs too. It's good if I squish a crook like you. So the kid is saying that it's okay to squish that little ant because the ant come, comes and, stay, and takes food from picnics. So that means it's okay. It's okay to squish him. That's what the kid thinks. Ant. Hey, I'm not a, a crook kid. Read my lips. Sometimes ants need crumbs and chips. One little chip can feed my town. So please don't make your shoe come down. So the ant comes back and says that actually... He's just trying to provide for his whole town. Trying to get food for everybody. Hmm, I wonder what the author's trying to teach us in this text. Kid. But all my friends squish ants each day. Squishing ants is a game we play. They're looking at me, they're listening too. They all say I should squish you. So the kid is saying that, oh well, all my friends are doing it. 
all the friends are doing it, that means the kid wants to do it too and be just like his friends. But do you have to do everything your friends do? Hmm. Hmm. Oh my, this goes up and down again. Aunt, I can see you're big and strong. Decide for yourself what's right and wrong. If you were me and I were you, what would you want me to do? Whoa. He's saying if the ant was big and the boy was small, what would the boy want? Would he want to be squished? Is the boy treating the ant the way the boy would want to be treated? Hmm, that seems like something that maybe the author's trying to teach us. That sounds like an author's message to me. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Should the ant get squished? Should the ant go free? It's up to the kid, not up to me. We'll leave the kid with that raised up shoe. What do you think the kid should do? So the author actually just ends the book. Right there, that's that's it, that's the end of the book. The author just ends the book with the kid sitting standing there with his shoe raised up ready to smush that ant. So I want you guys to think about, I'm gonna ask your opinion about something. What do you think the boy should do? Should the boy smush the ant or not? What would you do? I want you to think about what would what would you do if it was a different type of bug or different type of, uh, if it was a, a spider for instance. I know I don't walk around squishing bugs. I don't do that because I would want people to treat me the way I want to be treated and I would want to be smushed myself and he, they're just living their life. But I am guilty sometimes of smushing spiders. Sometimes I flush them down the toilet. That kills them, obviously. And so I'm thinking, well, I don't really do that to other bugs, but definitely to arachnids, to spiders. I feel kind of like I'm guilty of doing that. So that actually does change me, change my answer because my answer would be I wouldn't do it. But then I think, well, I actually do do that to spiders. Maybe I shouldn't. So I want you guys to think about what you would do if you were the boy. Also, what is the author trying to teach us in this text? What does the author want us to learn? I, you know, the page that sticks out to me that really tells me what the author is teaching us is this big page where it has the ant big like the boy is and the boy is small like the ant. And it talks about how would you want me to do this to you? This is about treating people the way you want to be treated. I think the author's message is to treat people the way you want to be treated. And I think also the author wants you to, to think about, well, I don't know that ant, but does that mean that he doesn't, that he doesn't deserve to live? He's little, but that doesn't mean he can't do big things. So the author's probably trying to talk to you guys about that. And I'm thinking kind of bigger picture um, about just not even necessarily bugs or ants or anything like that. I'm thinking about just people. Maybe I don't know a certain person, but that doesn't mean that that person isn't important to other people and he doesn't mean that he's not important. That kind of tells me to make sure that I'm always being kind to everybody because you just don't know don't know anything about other people. You just don't know. So it tells you a person you just need to be kind to everybody no matter what. No matter what you think, you always just need to be kind to other people. So I think that's probably what the author's message is also. And oftentimes, there's more than one author's message in texts. Okay? All right, I'll see you guys next time.